name is uh, Hugh South. Um, I've been diving for 35 years. I'm an advanced diver and advanced instructor and a member of, as Mark said, a member of the Marlin Sub Aqua Club in Nuneaton. Uh, there's one good thing about Nuneaton. It's about 10 miles from Stony Cove. So if we're going training, it's quite easy to get people there. On the other hand, it's in the middle of the country and it's about three to four or maybe even five hours driving before we hit the sea, which, of course, is the best type of diving to do. Um, I'm a retired consultant pharmacist. I'm now in my mid-70s, so uh, I'm still actually diving, but I don't do the techie stuff these days quite as much. And that little picture of me at the bottom is actually up at Eyemouth on the St. Abbs uh, Peninsula. So uh, that was there last year. Right, so let's ask the question, first of all, why do we want to take a few simple medicines away with us on a diving holiday? Well, we want to enjoy our diving holidays, but occasionally you may become unwell, uh, not feel too good and be a long way from home, hospital or in fact from somebody who can help or somebody who can uh, treat you in any way. Be wise to have a few stop medicines available, whether you're in a hotel, on a day boat or even on a liverboard. So I've devised sort of 10 top tips or 10 conditions, if you like, where you can help uh, yourselves overcome the problem. So first of all, and before I start, I want to just go into what is a name of a medicine? Well, the cheapest way to buy medicines is by their generic, as we call them, generic or common name. They're also available as brand names, of course, but they're more expensive. So in the slides that follow, I've put the more expensive brands in brackets alongside the generic name. There is genuinely no difference in effect. If you take a medicine, it dissolves with the water that you swallow with in your stomach. It forms a solution. It's passed on to your intestines, where it's absorbed through the membranes there, gets into the bloodstream and circulates to the around the body to the part where it uh, is going to exert its effect. Now, that will start taking effect in about one hour after you've taken it. There's no way you can say, oh, I swallowed a couple of paracetamol, they'll be working in five minutes. No, it's about up to about an hour um, before they really start kicking in and they reach their peak effect in about two hours. So two hours after you get the full benefit of them. So anyway, talking about generics and brand names, there's an example there now, paracetamol, which costs you 40 pence from any uh, local shop and Panadol, which is the brand name, about £1.99. That's for a pack of 16. You may run into problems because they don't like you buying more than two packs of 16. There is a genuine reason for that I won't go into, uh, and they'll question it and stop you having more than two packs. But if you ask your friendly pharmacist um, for two packs and give him a real good reason, uh, then he might let you have two packs of uh, 32. Another good example of that is ibuprofen, 40 pence for um, 16 pack, Nurofen, which is a brand name that everybody knows, uh, is uh, £2.29 uh, for 16. Uh, honestly, there is just no difference in the effect, just the price. Everybody says, oh, I think the brand one works different, uh, works faster or something. It might be five minutes faster just because of the way it's released from the tablet, but it's not really any difference at all. Now, all the doses and things that I quote tonight or for adults and children over 12, are classified as adults over 12. So there's nothing in here for children under 12 at all. So what am I going to talk about? Well, I've devised 10 topics, and these are one, pain, and two, indigestion, three, diarrhea, four, nasal congestion, and your ears. Five, seasickness, six, allergies, seven, fungal infections, eight, insect bites and jellyfish stings, 
nine sunburn and 10 fly sprays and plasters. So you can see there's nothing majorly complicated in there. It's not going to be a lecture about medicines per se to a higher level uh, of prescription only medicines or things that you can get from your doctor. So we're talking about quick fixes that you can do for yourself. So there you are, keep it simple. We know all that acronym from uh, uh, BZAP training lectures, it's just gonna be kept simple. Now, all of these medicines are available over the counter, which means you can get them either from supermarkets or from pharmacies. And the amount of products now available in supermarkets um, it, it is, is really uh, tons and tons more than ever you could have bought when I first started training as a pharmacist. So uh, they're very, very freely available now. And that's because of your years and years of safety checks and they're all OK. So let's kick off with the first one then, pain. You've got for headaches and also for mild to moderate pain, not for, not for strong pain, but mild to moderate pain. And you can, for that, you can use paracetamol, Panadol, which we'll do first, and, and ibuprofen or neurofen, which we will do secondly. So paracetamol, the adult dose is two 500 milligram tablets, four times a day, but for safety, maximum two at a time, but no more than eight in 24 hours, and leave a gap of four hours between doses. Excess paracetamol can damage your kidneys and your liver, so juice, please stick to the dose on that particular one. The other thing to mention is people say, oh, I don't like tablets. Well, if you don't like tablets, you just suffer the pain. It's as simple as that. These type, these type of medicines are here to help you, um, and it's wise to take them. Again, paracetamol is available over the counter. There's no prescription required uh, for that. So paracetamol and the brand name Panadol. With ibuprofen, other name Nurofen, the adult dose is less. It's two tablets, but only three times a day with a maximum of two at a time. And leave a gap of four to five or maybe even six hours between doses uh, on that. Now, let me just say something about the interval between medication doses. When you take your medicine, as I explained earlier, it takes about two hours to get to the peak plasma concentration, the maximum effect, in other words, about two hours. But after that, the body in the liver metabolizes and breaks down those uh, medicines and excretes them from the body. So the amount it then deteriorates in the body. If you have to take a medicine more often, say four times a day, then it's just excreted faster than one that you only have to take three times a day. And twice a day, one is excreted very, very slowly. And if it's once a day, it only is excreted fully at the end of a 24 hour session. So that's just to do with the way the body metabolizes uh, the different medicines. Now, back to ibuprofen. Um, it's as good a Painkiller as paracetamol, uh, but it's better at controlling inflammation in sprains and pulled muscles. It's a better anti-inflammatory, uh, as they call it, but it uh, is uh, can upset your stomach, so it should always be taken with or, or just straight after food. Now, I'll let you know as a little secret here that about 54 years ago, I used to work for Boots Research Department and I was part of the team that actually developed ibuprofen. So I know that little uh, medicine quite well. Right, again, it's over available over the counter, so no problems in getting that one. So paracetamol and ibuprofen I've looked at so far and taken regularly throughout the day, uh, these medicines are a lot more powerful than people think at killing pain or killing or knocking out headaches and things like that. And the same can be said for ibuprofen. But what a lot of people don't realize that it's actually safe to take paracetamol and ibuprofen together. Hence, it's because they work in different ways. But if you do this, you'll double up the pain killing effect. Um, but I will point out it's only these two, not a, that's not applicable to any other medication that I'm going to talk about tonight. So paracetamol and ibuprofen can be taken safely together.
In fact, it's a good way that the children use it when they bring it down temperatures with Calpol and Nurofen liquids. Right, so that's pretty plain straightforward. Um, indigestion is the next one, and that includes heartburn. Uh, it is nothing more than excess acid production in the stomach caused by things like spicy foods, changing your diet, rich fatty diets, lots of chips and that sort of stuff, or just excessive food and alcohol, alcoholic drinks. It sounds like a diving holiday, doesn't it to me? <laughs> yeah, so uh, all those things can give you indigestion, that's it. But heartburn is when the acid in the stomach refluxes up the esophagus uh, and uh, causes that really uh, strong pain in the chest there. Now, I'm going to call one product here by name, by its brand name, Gaviscon, because everybody will know that one, I'm pretty certain. It, um, and that's the one to go for rather than looking at generics, although they are available. Um, it uh, contains sodium bicarbonate for quick neutralization of acid, calcium carbonate for slower um, neutralization and a product called sodium alginate which comes from seaweeds in fact and that interacts with the acid on the stomach and forms a little raft over the top of the stomach contents so that stops you burping it up if you like up your, up your esophagus um, and that stops the heartburn a little bit of difference in this you can get a liquid form um, but it's easy to take away with uh, as a tablet form which you chew and then you swallow it with water. Don't don't swallow those with water. They'll get stuck in your throat. They're big tablets and they swell uh, when you. Um, uh, 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 yeah, they swell with water. Sorry. Um, there are generics available. I know Wilkinson's do one um, and they're all also all sold over the counter. Third topic then is diarrhea. Now, food poisoning is a bit of a <laughs> subject. And it's caused by pharaohs and Montezumas also cause them, but unfortunately they're not uh, they're not divers guys. So um, antibiotics are not usually given for diarrhea um, because they're supposed to be self limiting, um, unless it's some very very severe. Now some liverboards, I know in Egypt they usually carry something around on board, but they're really gut sterilizing medicines rather than antibiotics as such. Now. I would point out one thing that to avoid diarrhea, it is best to avoid cold buffets and make sure you only eat hot cooked food. When rice is cooked, well, when rice is existing dry, it's, it contains some bacteria on it. And when it's heated up and boiled, the bacteria don't die off completely. They sort of shrink into a spore or seed, if you like, and they're not all killed off in the process of boiling. So when you put the rice out to cool off and be cold, uh, it the, the spores hatch out again and become bacteria, which can then cause you diarrhea. And of course, if in a cold buffet, they might have been standing around for, you know, since the morning before you're going to eat it in, in the evening, and the bacteria have had a lot of time to uh, uh, proliferate in that time. So avoid best cold buffets, especially rice. It's a real knockout point. Now, a lot of people advocate allowing the runs to, to occur to expel the bugs faster. But the peramide, its brand name is Imodium. It stops the aggravated movements and spasms of the guts and drives you up. Hence, reducing your number of visits to the heads, the toilets, and getting you back to diving uh, much, much quicker. Your choice, if you want to carry on and let it flush out, that's your thing. But just remember, guys, that fish absolutely love poo. So we got loperamide, uh, Imodium. It's two capsules straight away and one after each loose motion up to a maximum of eight in 24 hours. And if you take those, you'll probably be, might be bunged up for a day or two afterwards as well. They, they work really, really well, but at least you'll get out diving quickly. Again, they're over, available over the counter. Now, there's another thing about diarrhea is it's really, really important to drink water 
or other rehydration drinks like Diorolite to stop you getting dehydrated. Because as you all know as divers, if you get dehydrated, it affects your susceptibility to getting a decompression illness. So uh, it is important to drink plenty of water. Diorolite makes you rehydrate faster than water uh, alone. It's got a little bit of salt and some sugars in it, which help it be absorbed that much faster. Now, there's also a product called Buscapan. Uh, it's an antispasmodic, is its real name, is what it does. And it stops the spasm, crampy pains that you can get with diarrhea. So um, if you wanted to add that to the retina, then that's a, a, a good choice as well. But certainly Imodium, I know which way I would rather take. I'd rather take the Imodium and get on with my diving. Now, this is one thing really, which is, is, is a prescription product. If you are really ill with diarrhea, um, there is a product um, where you, well, put it this way, you might get dehydrated to the state that it's actually dangerous for you and hospitalization may be required. And there's one product here called Ciproxin. Its generic name is uh, Ciprofloxacin. Uh, it's the drug of choice, but it's only available from your general practitioner doctor as a private um, prescription. Private prescription because it's a holiday. It's not like an NHS thing. Now, if you go away on a, a expedition miles from anywhere, like sometimes like one of these BBC um, expeditions to outer somewhere or other, then they would probably have a medication kit that might contain something like that. But really and truly, the average diver doesn't know it. But if you were planning an expedition, it might be a good idea to have some of this. The dose is only twice a day for that one. There are some precautions because it can cause tendonitis, but uh, you'll read that when you read the instructions on the packaging. Right, now moving on to colds and nasal congestion and a little bit about tears as well. Uh, pseudoephedrine or Sudafed, as you all know, is the diver's best friend. However, you've also been told time and time again, if you're really, really got a snotty cold, you should just not be diving. So I would suggest you only use these Sudafed and decongestion products if it's towards the end of your cold and you just got a little bit of nasal mucus around that you want to clear. But whatever you do, make sure you can valve salva and clear your ears before you um, uh, go diving. That's most important. Now, the adult dose of Sudafed, that's the one on the on the left here. You can read the product as pseudoephedrine on the, where my arrow is pointing. Pseudoephedrine. Uh, it's only available in pharmacies, that one. It can be a little bit tricky. It can do some nasty things with that one as far as the drug people can uh, take. But it's safe for you to take anyway. Um, there is a milder form called phenylephrine. And if you look at the other arrow on the right hand side, the pack there, phenylephrine is a, minor, a milder form of it. But these two are not suitable if you have high blood pressure. They can send your blood pressure up, so that could be tricky. And it's not good for deeper diving where you're having high nitrox levels because uh, the, the, the papers say that uh, um, pseudoephrine can aggravate oxygen toxicity with nitrox high levels. All right, so that's uh, the pseudoephed. So three times a day, basically, uh, those ones are available only from your pharmacies. Now, what I always find very, very useful and simplest is products that are nasal sprays and you can get Sudafed or Otravine, their brand names, uh, nasal sprays. And the generic names are either Oxy or Xylomitazoline. You can see the name just down here, Oxymetazoline. They're both very, very similar and do the same sort of trick. But if you're going to use those, it's best to do it as you're kidding up so that it's nice and fresh up your nose. Uh, a couple of puffs up the nostril, and uh, then you can go in the water to make sure you can valve salva as well, clear ears um, to, before you before you set off. You don't want to get it. You don't want it wearing off basically when you're having a long dive and then find you've got blockage in your ears on your ascent. And a very very simple trick is just to inhale seawater, um, spray off your hand. Now seawater is about four and a half, three and a half, four percent saline, and if you dip your hand in it, 
in the seawater um, and you dive and then you sort of rub it rub your hand across your nose while you're inhaling fast as well creates a little bit of a spray and you get that sort of salty taste and uh, up your nose and it really does clear your nostrils shrink some mucus on there but just be where you're diving because some places are very close to sewer outlets and you don't want to be introducing a, an infection into your nose so that's seawater great little trick i think that one is now again uh, we're moving on just a little bit now the main problem about ears is ear wax it can complicate diving because the water gets trapped with or behind your natural cerumen which is the proper name for ear wax um the nature designed to lubricate and to protect the, your eardrum so uh Earwax doesn't cause majorly any problems, except that water does get trapped behind it or inside it, which causes that loss of hearing sensation when you're back on the surface, when you want to bang your head on one side to try and clear it out, and it never comes out, does it? Um, prolonged immersion in seawater will probably soften the wax anyway a little bit, so it might run out naturally. Uh, after you've had a, a few days diving but whatever you do do not try to use q-tips to clear it because you can't see down your own eardrum and you'll end up impacting the wax harder against your eardrum and a result that you could even rupture it now if you need to soften the wax the simplest and easiest is household olive oil drops you just put a couple of drops down your ear for two or three days before your holiday um, we'll soften it and then it will probably run out um, quite naturally. Or well, there's a product called Otex, um, which contains hydrogen peroxide that reacts with the earwax and it forms little bubbles and the bubbles dislodge it and that will run out, you know, in the shower or something like that. Um, so um, there are a couple of good bits of advice to clear away eardrops. Again, they're both available over the counter. Seasickness is the next subject. Uh, other proper name is motion sickness. It's when the part of the brain that deals with balance is not coping with all the rock and roll of being on a boat, whether it's a, a rib or a, a hard boat or whatever. Uh, it's not good. Uh, a bit of advice here. I'm sure a lot of you know this already, but keep to the center of the boat and watch the horizon. That minimizes the... Um, it, it, movement of you on the boat rather than being at the edge of the boat or the front of the boat and watching the horizon make sure your, your eyesight is looking at the most stable part of your vision rather than the sea either side of the boat now many of these products are antihistamines but they can cause drowsiness and that would possibly potentiate or make worse narcosis so we don't want that to happen so the one I've found over the years, which is, has the fewest of the side effects, is a product called Sinarazine. Sinarazine, and that's brand name Stugaron. And you take two tablets a couple of hours before you're going on board, but the boat, and then one each, uh, one every eight hours uh, after that. So basically, two before you start your diving a couple of hours before and then by the time you've gone to the next one it'll be time to come off the boat and they're very available in pharmacies i haven't seen those in supermarkets at all so there's some pictures there's stugaron up the top there uh one of the problems about chucking up over the side and of course you all your diving experience says you will do this downwind of anybody else and well clear of anybody else so they don't get it in their faces. Um, but one of the problems is that you might vomit before the tablets have had time to be absorbed. Um, so be aware of that if you're very, very sick uh, when you first uh, take them. Now, there's another product called Prochlorperazine. Its brand name is Buckstam, is available. Uh, this is only available on a doctor's prescription, though, unfortunately. But this one, you suck. I know you've seen my little feature there. You suck the tablet underneath the top gum, and it's, it slowly absorbs through the mucous membranes of your gum. And it's a very short trip from your gum there to the top of your head, so where it acts in your brain and calms your uh, motion sickness uh, mechanism down there. 
So that's a good problem, but it's only available on a doctor's prescription. But cheating, I'm not officially allowed to tell you this. There's a Buckerstem M version, which is available for people to take my, for migraines. It's exactly the same. Uh, if you just happen to, well, you know, have some in your kit bag, then that's fair enough. And if you're French, it's also available as a suppository. No, nothing against the French, by the way. You know, you don't play good rugby either, but <laughs> sorry, I'm only joking. It's nothing else. It's not serious. It's ban dive banter. Uh, so that's the migraine version of Buckerstem. Moving on now to allergies. The most famous probably of all of them is a product called Pyriton. Um, it's been around for ages and ages. It's one of the first antihistamines to be developed many, many years ago. And it's good for hay fever, skin irritation, allergic reactions, insect bites, and itching. But just remember, that the more you itch, the more you will scratch. And because as you itch, you irritate the skin and break down some cells, which releases a little chemical called histamine, which makes your skin itchier and red, of course, as well. So be careful not to scratch it in itch if you can. And that's why the products are called antihistamines. There is a big problem, though, is that they can cause drowsiness, which is not good for diving. Uh, interaction causing narcosis and there's a big warning on the packet in fact do not drive or operate machinery or drink alcohol at the same time as taking these tablets so it's perhaps not so good for, as a diving one but it's there for the other conditions um, and the dose is one tablet every four to six hours with a maximum of six in 24 hours and it's available freely over the counter now there have been developments in uh, not too recent years, but some time ago. You can get non-drowsy antihistamines, which are the best ones for divers to take. They're okay for hay fever and such, but they're not so good for the itchy skin. And the dose for these is one a day because it has a long-lasting effect uh, in the body. And the two products are called cetirizine which is Alacan. It used to be called Zyrtec at one time, a name that some people might remember. And the other one is Loratadine, which is called Claridine, Claritin. And they're probably better choices of antihistamines if you're scuba diving. And I do want to mention one other product as well, because uh, hay fever for beconase, and there's also one called flixinase, but just stick to beconase, it, it's the simplest one to use. It's a steroidal anti-inflammatory nasal spray. So you put a couple of puffs at that each nostril twice a day. Um, and it needs a couple of days to build up to maximum effect, uh, but that's good at reducing the hay fever symptoms as well. Uh, some hay fever sufferers have to use that continuously throughout um, the, the hay fever season. And again, it's available over the counter at one time. It used to be prescription only, but it's so, so safe to, to use now. So that's uh, Beconay's hay fever relief. Now, number seven, we moved on to fungal infections. Uh, Athlete's foot is a fungal infection. Crutch rot, you get uh, little fungal itches in the uh, groin there. And other fungal infections such as vaginal candidiasis, which is otherwise known as thrush. And the product for um, using this is uh, clotrimazole or caniston. And I'm sure, lads and lasses, we've all had fungal infections in our life and uh, find them being a bit itchy and uh, irritating as well. So clotrimazole or caniston, uh, and the ladies can get this product down the bottom called thrush combi. Uh, there's a little arrow down here. It's a, a pessary to insert and a cream to use as well. Um, and that, so that would be a single treatment with a several uh, applications for the cream, uh, whereas the ordinary caniston cream here would be two or three applications a day for three or four days. You can get other athletes' foot treatments. Dactarin is another one, but, you know, a caniston is so versatile, you may just as well use it uh, as two 
uh, using anything else. So that's uh, Caniston products. Now moving on to another one now, insect bites and jellyfish stings. Uh, and I put in the great big capital letters there, hydrocortisone cream, 1%. It is the panacea for all medication uh, to application to the skin for dermatitis, which is dry skin condition, allergic reactions, which is hives, jellyfish stings, insect bites for mozzies and other inflammatory or reddening skin conditions. And you apply it two or three times a day. And officially, it shouldn't be used on the face. I'm not supposed to be able to tell you. You can use it on the face. But I guess one or two off wouldn't hurt just in a single uh, occasion. The main reason is because hydrocortisone can cause a skin thinning in long term use. And the skin is pretty much thin on the face already. So I wouldn't advocate. I can't really tell you to use it on the face because I get kicked out of the pharmaceutical society. Um, so one thing, though, don't confuse um, allergic reaction type thing, uh, uh, um, fungal infections that you'd have to, and use caniston uh, and just use hydrocortisone cream away. Because if you just use hydrocortisone cream by itself, it would make the fungal infection worse. So if in doubt, use the caniston uh, as well at the same time. And please... Forget that silly old adage about urine or vinegar being good on jellyfish stings. It really doesn't do any good at all, apart from the liquid flushing it. It might make it feel a little cooler for a little while. But please use high cortisone on jellyfish stings. It works wonders. It really does take the, the inflammation out of it. Sunburn. Well, what do we do when we go on holiday, diving holidays? We just sit out in the sun for too long, especially if we're on a liverboard or somewhere in a warm climate, and you can just get burn up. And believe you me, it can ruin your diving because of your skin reaction to it. You only need 20 minutes out in the sun and you get reddening and 40 minutes and you're really getting burn. And the UV is divided into two, ultraviolet light is divided into two. So it's UVA with ages and UVB, which burns. And all suntan factors, if you notice down here, you've got a factor number, but you've also got um, a UVA rating as well to, to stop the skin aging. So just don't get burned. Keep out the sun. Um, and you cause too much sun can cause skin cancers later in life. So be very, very careful. Careful, we do. We all like a little bit of sun. It's the way we go back to tell our friends, oh, we've been on holiday, uh, and they say, but by the nice brown suntan your face has got on your body. Right. So, slip, slap, slop, slip on a shirt, keep your back protected, slap on a hat, and slop on the sun cream. And be wary that if you're snorkeling in without a t shirt on, uh, or even through the t shirt as well, your back's completely exposed to the surface. So, you might need to add some sun cream onto your back if you're just snorkeling or certainly to wear a darker coloured T-shirt. And the last one is really another simple one. It's a fly spray and some plasters. Uh, assuming you're not travelling to a malaria infected area where you will need to speak to a nurse, a pharmacist or a doctor to get special medication to protect you against malaria. Uh, just remember that the bloody little buzzing body biting the nine mosquitoes are going to get you. They focus in on the carbon dioxide that you breathe out and they'll find a way through vents and window, open windows and everything like that in and hone in on you and they will bite you to death. So if you've got a mozzie net, use it. If not, with this fly spray, uh, it's just a common garden fly spray. Uh, spray it in your room about half to one hour before bedtime and then get out of the room so that you're not inhaling the vapours. That's for your own safety. Go and have another beer or something like that. And um, that should hopefully um, kill them off. And uh, it, you, you won't be bitten. Sometimes it's more it's uncomfortable to sleep with all the windows closed and everything. But if you open them, they will get in. And the plasters, of course, are always uh, needed. Uh, assorted, mixed or stripped, you can cut from. If you cover a wound up before it scabs over, it keeps the wound moist and the new skin cells grow from the old existing 
uh, skin cells around the wound and they will grow directly across the moist part uh, and it will heal the wound in about a third of the time than if you allow it to scab over. If you let it scab over, the new skin cells have got to grow down and underneath the scab before they cause that irritating itch when it's time to pull the scab off. So uh, be wary of that. Uh, a covered dressing will also help to keep out infection. So uh, that's a good thing to have. And then when you've got it all together, find yourself a nice waterproof plastic box, uh, big enough to keep it in. It might take a little bit of space in your dive bag or in your hand baggage, uh, but you need to keep it dry and away from any airborne moisture. So that's uh, that. So that is the 10 medications I, um, I've gone through. There's a couple of little safety factors and other things I want to go through with you. Uh, medication interactions. Well, although the medicines I've highlighted are generally safe, there is a possibility that someone out there is allergic to them or is just unable to take them. But you will know that uh, if you've had it um, before. There is also the possibility that they could interact with the medicines if you're taking prescription medicine. So be wary of that and make sure you read the patient information leaflet inside, which will advise you on that. Uh, also, you could seek advice from a pharmacist and nurse or your doctor. But we would try as well not to exceed the adult stated dose on the packaging. And once the products have uh, expired, uh, the date has expired, just get just renew the, the medicines that I've given you tonight probably will cost you in the region of about well some are 40 pence and some are six pounds or other so altogether they're not going to cost you more than 25 to uh, 30 pounds and uh, just think what you're spending on your diving holiday so do keep your, your stocks up to date so just to summarize then uh, I try to keep it simple with everyday medicines you can buy from your uh, pharmacies and supermarkets over the counter. The treatable conditions I've listed are pain, which you'd use paracetamol or ibuprofen or both for. We'd use indigestion. And remember, I just said just stick to Gaviston on, on that one. Uh, that's much easiest to uh, easiest one to remember. For diarrhea, use loperamide, his brand name was Imodium. For nasal congestion, I reckon uh, pseudoephedrine, which is Sudafed, uh, is the best one for that. Also available as one of the nasal sprays as well. And seasickness, the one I recommended most was called Sinarazine, which is branded as Stugeron. We've got allergies, which I said the best ones was a non-drowsy antihistamine clause claritin which i just realized i spelt wrongly it's claritin not actin um that was a hurried change tonight on that and i made a mistake for fungal infections clotrimazole which is caniston for insect bites and jellyfish hydrocortisone cream sunburn prevention is better than cure factor 30 or more as a lotion and keep out the sun when you feel that you've had enough mosquito bites and insect bites are fly spray and net and one thing about fly spray um put it in your hold baggage not in your hand baggage that you take on board because it's um they don't want that going off accidentally on board with reduced pressure or anything like that so uh, make sure that's in your hold not in your hand on board baggage and use your net if possible and first aid just some assorted plasters and then last of all large enough waterproof storage box to put them in enjoy your diving holidays uh if you want to email for me for a proper list, uh, that's my email address on the bottom. Very easy to remember, hugh.south at sky.com. And what I'm going to do now in a, just if you've got your mobile phones ready, um, you can take a picture of the next slide, which have a summary of the medication uh, on it. And if not, you can, of course, get it from the webinar later, later on. So I'll leave this on board for a little there's your list of medications. Right. Now, while you're getting your mobile cameras to do that, uh, I've 
it's had a little um, hint put up on screen, which I'm very thankful for. Just remember that you can't take anything in a liquid form more than 100 milliliters on board um, an aircraft anyway. So uh, if you are taking liquid medications, just make sure it's in a fairly small container.